Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to MSB lecture series on transmetallic chemistry. We are in almost, uh, we are in the last stages of uh, this course, okay, this is the 58th uh, lecture and in my previous lecture I started discussion on NMR spectroscopy uh, to make you familiar with interpretation to solve the structure of uh, some simple molecules that you come across to make yourself familiar with NMR. As I mentioned if you are more interested it is a wonderful topic and wonderful subject for uh, you know studying and also doing research and if you are more interested always you can go to uh, fully dedicated NMR spectroscopy courses and also the books I showed you in the beginning of my 57th lecture. So, let me continue from where I had stopped. In my previous uh, lecture I was telling about spin spin splitting and how NMR is so powerful in uh, interpreting data and structure determination for uh, molecules containing NMR active nuclei. I was telling about Pascal triangle for I equals half. So, this is the one and I said it is unique for uh, each nuclear spin this is for I equals half. If we have 7 lines we will be having intensity ratio of 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. Of course, you can also examine this one by considering 6 equivalent protons as 6 arrows and start arranging them. 6 all 6 are Okay, first upward and then 5 are upward, 1 is down and then 1 can be 5th one, 6th one or 1st one, 2nd one like that you have 15 options are there and then when you have 2 upward spin, low spin and 4 upward spin you have 20 options and again it repeats in the same sequence here and we end up with 7 signals, 7 lines in a multiplet of septet having this intensity. As I mentioned I told you that I will show you in case of isopropyl that is coming I think I would show you about uh, how 7 lines are coming. The range of magnetic coupling we will see now. Equivalent protons do not split each other. For example, if you look into ethanol CH3, CH2, OH in CH3 protons they do not split each other. Same way methylene protons they do not split each other. Protons bonded to the same carbon will split each other only if they are non-equivalent. If the two hydrogen atoms present on the same carbon atom will split each other only if they are not equivalent. So, those cases are there I can show you and then protons and adjacent carbon normally will couple. When you look into two groups alkyl say CH3 group, CH2 group or CH they normally okay, couple and show spin splitting accordingly. So, protons separated by 4 or more bonds will not couple because when you move further the influence of the magnetic field generated by those will be less as a result what happens they do not couple. That is the reason we do not see very long range coupling. For example, one CH3 is here after CH2, CH2 there is one more. So, really it does not have much influence or its magnetic field generated in the same magnetic field when we keep it, it does not have influence on the radio frequency of this one as a result they do not couple. So, now splitting for isopropyl group I showed you ok. So, your structure is shown here now these two are equivalent and now this is different and then this is different here. So, that means in this one if you see this CH3 is not coupled it will show a single a singlet here and now this one is split by these 6 into 7 lines that is shown here and of course, it is expanded you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The ratio if you see it is 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. So, that means 1 is to 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1. You can examine that one and then for these two will be under the influence of this one it splits into a doublet here. So, this is how it is splitting. And uh, as I mentioned in case of uh, ethanol I should show you CH3, CH2, OH. So, let us not worry about this one. Now, this one will be split by these 3. So, first these all the 3 will be in this fashion and now what happens we will be having 1, 2 like this and 1 like this and now this one can have now 1 like this, this one like this and this like this and now what would happen it can be here and these two will be here like this. So, this is one set 3 are there and now what happened 1 is like this 2 are down 
and then one down up like this or like this and like this. You cannot have anything else. Now, we have all the 3 down like this. So, now if you see 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, that is the reason. So, this one will show a signal something like this. On the other hand, for this one would be influence of under these two. So, these two will be 1 like this, 1 is like this, 1 is like this, 1 is like this, 1 is like this and 1 will be like this, 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, so, this is how you can also write for 6 also. 6 if isopropyl is there we have to write like this 1 like this 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, you consider 1 all the 5 and 1 like this and 1 keep on shifting here and then you write for 2, 3 like that. So, then you will end up with this ratio here. So, this is how you can calculate the spin multiplicity and also their relative intensities and this one simply you can do it from looking into Pascal triangle. Now for this isopropanol spectrum I have shown here, a septet is there and OH is coming around 4.8 and then this is coming around 14.02 and then these two are coming as a doublet around 1.21. What is coupling constant now? Another term is coming. So, distance between the peaks of a multiplet is called coupling constant. If you go back to here, if you see the separation between these two, this is same as this separation, this same as this separation, this separation is same and this separation is called J coupling constant. And in this case what happens here? If you consider this one 1, 2, 3. So, if I write here like this, this is 1, 2, 3 bond coupling, 3 H H coupling. And of course, for this also it is same, this also the 2 is there, this also 3 j h h coupling. This separation is same as this separation that indicates they are coupled to each other. This is called coupling constant and distance between the peaks of multiplet then measured in hertz, not dependent on strength of the external field you should remember. Since it is measured in hertz, it is independent of magnetic field strength whether I record in 60 megahertz or 300 megahertz or 600 megahertz the coupling constant remains same and chemical shift in ppm remains same. Multiplets with the same coupling constant may come from adjacent group of protons that split each other. So, now values for coupling constant is given here for this one what happens when free rotation is there this is 7 hertz and here the cis coupling is 10 hertz and trans coupling is larger 15 hertz uh, and the same carbon due to some reason if it is molecule is unsymmetric and then the hydrogens on the same carbon will split then that is called geminal coupling that is 2 hertz very small because they have very similar Larmor frequency 2 hertz. And then in case of ortho coupling in case of aromatic group it is 8 hertz, meta it is 2 hertz because farther and normally you do not see para they are too far and in allylic it is uh, 6 hertz. The value of 7 hertz in an alkyl group is averaged for rapid rotation about the carbon carbon bond. If rotation is hindered by a ring or bulky groups other splitting constant may be observed. And complex splitting as I mentioned geminal coupling you can see here because this molecule is uh, not symmetric and now the relationship between Hb with Ha is different from relation with HC with HA because these two are trans and these two are cis. As a result, they are not very similar. They are chemically equivalent, but magnetically they are not equivalent. As a result, what happens? Both of them will show different signals, but the margin is very less, but they show coupling with this HA. So, signals may be split by adjacent protons different from each other with different coupling constants. Once when you look into spectrum, we should be able to assign the signal due to HA, HB and HC very readily. For example, in the above example, HA of styrene is split by an adjacent H trans to it by 17 hertz. This coupling is 17 hertz, whereas this coupling is 11 hertz. That means it shows a doublet of doublets. One is 17 hertz, first you should write and this we call coupling or splitting or tree we call it, splitting tree that we should be able to write it. I will try to make you familiar in writing this one. So, H cis to it 11 hertz that means trans is more 17 hertz and the first it will be split by trans to give 2 signals and each signal will be further split into 2 each by Hc with 11 hertz. You can see here 6.6 .6 HA. HA first uh, you say 6.6, .6. 
first it is coupled with uh, this one splits into a doublet and then each line will further split it because the coupling constants are different. It is stepwise you have to see the coupling and then this separation is 11 hertz, this separates 11 hertz. Now it will be a doublet of doublets. The separation this one is shown here and between this one and this one is shown here. This is cis coupling and whereas this one is trans coupling. And same thing if this is for HA and then HB what happens of course HB first it splits into larger coupling and then the smaller coupling is between this one that is about 1.5 hertz and now you can see the spacing this is due to BC coupling and this is due to whether this one you take or whether you take this one this is due to JAB coupling 17 hertz. So now with this one we should be able to analyze the coupling constant for the other one also. This also shows the relationship between the mutually coupled protons. So that writing their geometry or structure and correct conformation is also very easy. So now spectrum of styrene is how it looks like. This one will be showing a doublet of doublet, this one will also showing a doublet of doublet and all three are showing doublet of doublet but wherever BC is there the coupling is very small 1.4 hertz. So with this one you should be able to make out which signal is due to which hydrogen atom very simple. Now let us look into stereochemical non-equivalence. What is the meaning of stereochemical non-equivalence? Usually two protons on the same carbon are equivalent and do not split each other I mentioned you and then if the replacement of each of the protons of a CH2 group with an imaginary Z gives stereoisomers then the protons are non-equivalent and will split each other. Now time dependence, molecules are tumbling relative to the magnetic field. So NMR is an average spectrum of all the orientations. Axial and equatorial protons on cyclohexane interconvert so rapidly that they give a single signal. For example, if you take NMR spectrum of cyclohexane at room temperature, what happens? They are rapidly converting axial into equatorial, equatorial into axial because of this dynamic process what happens NMR time scale does not identify separately axial and equatorial and it they appear as single signal rapid tumbling is there. What would happen if we go for low temperature? Yes, if you go for low temperature NMR in that case you can arrest this dynamic process so that you can clearly distinguish between axial and equatorial protons and you will see separate signals. So proton transfer for OH and NH may occur so quickly that the proton is not split by adjacent protons in the molecule. What happens they are very acidic as a result what happens they will be exchanging this hydrogen atoms work quickly as a result what happens at a given time the neighboring groups will fail to get influenced by the magnetic field of that one as a result what happens you do not see normally coupling due to OH or NH peaks. Because what happens if they flipping, the flipping is so fast, the flipping is so fast, if it is much faster than NMR time scale of 10 to the power of minus 8, as a result what happens? So you cannot see the influence of those protons unless otherwise you make it static or stop the dynamic process. For example, hydroxyl proton if you see here, uh, ethanol we have taken here, in ethanol you can see this CH3 will show a triplet because of n plus 1 here and then this one should show a strictly speaking a quadrat because of this one but each quadrat is split into a, a doublet that means we are seeing each quadrat is split into a doublet the doublet of quadrats. So that means that is because of OH proton here that means in very pure ethanol if you take 100 percent pure ethanol probably you can see this kind of things but rarely you will see it on the other hand what happens normally you see something like this here you will see a signal here and this is not influenced by this one you see a quadrat and a triplet here strictly speaking one should get a signal like this of course between OH and CH3 no coupling they are very far but certainly CH2 will be first coupled with a quadrat here or it can be a doublet if the, this coupling is more and then each line will be split into four lines because of this one. So a doublet of quadrats or a quadrat of doublets. So you can see here where this one is split by this one into triplet. Rarely you see this kind of spectrum. So ultra pure sample of ethanol can show splitting very pure 99.99 will not be enough it should be 99 100% 99.9999 you can keep on telling. So that can show this kind of thing. And ethanol with a small amount of acidic or basic impurities will not show splitting at all here. And NH proton again NH proton would be very broad here for the same reason because of rapid exchange 
and it will not show any coupling to any other uh, protons present on carbon. But these two will split each other. So, this will be giving a quadrate and this will be giving a triplet here. So, moderate rate of exchange and peak may be very broad. So, identifying OH and NH peaks. So, chemical shift will depend on concentration and solvent, it is very, very important. And to verify that a particular peak is due to OH or NH, shake the sample with D2O, keep it for 24 hours and I record and then the signal due to this one will be missing in the NMR that indicates you have OH or NH group as I mentioned earlier. Deuterium will exchange with OH and NH to form OD and ND. On a second NMR spectrum, the peak will be absent or much less intense. And now we look into carbon 13. So, 12 has no magnetic spin, 12 carbon and then abundance of 13 C uh, is only 1 percent. That means, if I take 100 molecules out of 100 molecules containing carbon, one molecule will have 13 C and remaining 99 would have 12 C, they are NMR inactive. So, whatever you will see signal that is because of 1. So, that means, signals are very weak and you need large quantity of sample to observe 13 C NMR. And gyromagnetic ratio of 13 C also one fourth of that of almost approximately one fourth of that of 1 H. That means, 60 megahertz NMR for proton would be about 15 megahertz for 13 C or if it is 25 megahertz in case of 100 or 100 megahertz in case of 400 megahertz. So, signals are very weak get engloshed in noise. And if the signal to noise ratio is very high, you may not even see a signal due to carbon at all. The sample should be very pure and it should be in larger quantity at least 12 percent to 20 percent should be there uh, carbon with NMR active. If not at least it should be little bit more or probably have to run the NMR for a longer time. Hundreds of spectra are taken and averaged. So, now let us look into hydrogen and carbon chemical shifts for various groups already I showed you in uh, previous ones. This gives some idea about the chemical shift range in both 13 C and 1 H for various groups here. For CH of uh, aldehyde or ketone, it will be around carboxylic group, it is here. And when you have a halogen here, it will be have 7 to 8. And when you have a alkene bound one, and then when you have a, a halo, it will be around 4 to 3. So, something like that. Similarly, one can also see for carbon also corresponding where they appear. So, now combined 13 C and 1 H spectra have shown here for this molecule here and this one is the 13 C spectrum. 13 C spectrum if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atoms are there, all 5 carbon atoms are very different as a result you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atoms are very different you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, one more should be here I think probably it is here. So, 2 are there here. In case of 1 H NMR you can see this one is here much D shielded and then NH proton is there and then what we have is these 3 protons we have these 3 signals here. And this NH is it is somewhere here it is a small NH very weak signal because of exchange. So, differences in 13 C technique. So, resonance frequency as I mentioned is 1 fourth or 15.1 megahertz instead of 60 megahertz. And then peak areas are not proportional to number of carbons and carbon atoms with more hydrogen atoms observe more strongly. That means, it is very difficult to see signal due to quaternary carbon. If carbon has hydrogen, the possibility of seeing strong signal is more. Like in looking to spin spin splitting here. So, it is unlikely that a 13 C would be adjacent to another 13 C. So, splitting by carbon is negligible. That means, carbon carbon splitting normally we do not come across unless it is enriched sample. If it is enriched sample means you know for example, if I take uh, uh, methanol all carbon atoms are 13 C in such molecules like ethanol if I take CH3, CH2, OH all CH3, CH2 have 13 C, 13 C then probably you can see coupling otherwise you do not see it because what happens if I take 100 here, 100 here and, and each one has an MR active one if you mix together the possibility of seeing those two coming together to establish coupling is very rare and it is negligible. So, that is the reason we do not see carbon carbon splitting at all. 13 C will magnetically couple with attached protons and adjacent. However, it can couple with other magnetically active nuclei such as hydrogen or phosphorus or fluorine or any other uh, NMR active nuclei. These complex splitting patterns are difficult to interpret. Now, proton spin decoupling, what is this one decoupling means? To simplify the spectrum, protons are continuously irradiated with noise 
so they are rapidly flipping. So that means when I am recording 13C to make it simple and interpretation is easy all hydrogens present will be decoupled from the carbon atom so that you will see signals only due to carbon since carbon carbon coupling is not there what happens you can just by looking into the local symmetry and you should be able to identify how many signals and if you see that many signals in NMR yes you can say you got your compound. So the carbon nucleus C an average of all the possible proton spin states and then thus each different kind of carbon gives a single unsplit peak all show unique one and in around 72.1 you may see a triplet of 1 is to 1 is to intensity that is due to CdCl3 sample we are using. CdCl3 normally we use as a solvent so that one the carbon is split with deuterium, deuterium is I equals 1 if you use N plus 1 rule deuterium is uh, I equals 1. So what basically you will see is 2 Ni plus 1 the splitting is so you can see 2 into 1 into 1 plus 3, 3 and now you get a triplet here n plus 1 peaks will be there but the splitting will be 4. So basically what happens 4 lines will be there. So here in case of deuterium CdCl3 if you see 13 C CdCl3 signal what happens it appears like this one here. So this is because this, this signal is coupled by this one D okay. So this is D is I equals 1, I equals 1. So you get a triplet okay. 2 Ni plus 1 number of lines will be there okay. of resonance decoupling. So what is that one? So a 13 C nuclear split only by the protons attached directly to them. So the N plus 1 rule applies a carbon with N number of protons gives a signal with N plus 1 peaks. So interpreting will be a little bit complicated as a result what happens we go for decoupled one you can see here for example this is a coupled NMR and this is a decoupled, decoupled is very easy we have 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons are there you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons plus TMS standard whereas here also we have 4 but you can see because of hydrogen coupling this one is also showing a quadrat and this is showing a triplet and this is showing a quadrat again. So this is how it is but we do not want that information whatever the information proton comes from 1H NMR. So we do not want to complicate 13C NMR that is the reason what we do is we nullify the coupling due to hydrogen and we call it as a decoupled 13C we write in this one decoupled one will be written like this 13C in flower bracket 1H means 1H decoupled similarly in case of 31P we see 1H something like this. Now MRI it is magnetic resonance imaging it, it should have been nuclear magnetic resonance imaging but since the nuclear coming people are uh, worried that it may be radioactive that is the reason the term nuclear is removed and it simply is called as magnetic resonance imaging. In this case what happens only protons in one plane can be in resonance at one time and computer puts together slices to get a 3D information 3D structure tumors readily detected and this is very important. So what is the FTR, FT NMR, Fourier transfer NMR? This is nothing but nuclei in a magnetic field are given a radio frequency pulse close to the resonance frequency and then the nuclei absorb energy and precise spin like little tops like precise and then they flip and then a complex signal is produced then decays as the nuclei lose energy that means when it comes back. Uh, to the ground state. Free induction decay is converted into spectrum. We store FID and then later you can convert that into spectrum. So now let us look into few problems here. A an organic molecule shows two absorption peaks at 870 and 975 hertz in a magnetic field of 3 tesla. What are the corresponding chemical shifts in ppm? This is a question and gyromagnetic ratio for 13C 6.7263 into 10 to the power of 7 radians per tesla per second uh, for 13C it is I equals half it is given and also it is organic molecule we are saying it is a 13C. So now we have to see what we have to do is we have to calculate now nu corresponding to this one because 3 tesla is there corresponding to tesla what is the magnetic field strength that we have to calculate. Once if we calculate magnetic field strength then if you divide that one the value 870 by that one you get the corresponding value in ppm. So let us do that one 
So, now you should remember only one equation here it is very simple delta e equals h nu equals gamma into h over 2 pi into b naught is the applied magnetic field and this is Planck's constant. So, now if this 2 goes then 2 pi nu equals gamma into b naught and then nu equals gamma b naught over 2 pi this is the thing. So, now b naught is given b naught equals this gamma is also given let us apply here 6.7263 into 10 to the power of 7 into 3 over 2 into 3.14 okay. approximately this comes around 32.1 into 10 to the power of 6 cps that equals to 32.1 megahertz. This is the field strength now this is the field strength. So, calculate the chemical shift in ppm in ppm. So, what you have to do is 870 is given here first 870 divided by 32.1 and another one is 975 divided by 32.1 will give you corresponding in ppm that one is 27.1 ppm and then this is 30.4 ppm. So, this is how one can do the calculation. Now, let us look into another example. In a magnetic field of strength 2.349 Tesla, the resonance frequency of 15 nuclei is 10.13 megahertz. What is the resonance frequency of 15 n in a magnet of 11.745 Tesla? So, now we have to see the 15 n frequency at 11.745 equals 15 n frequency at 2.349 is 5 times. So, that means basically 10.13 is nuclei 10.13 into 5 would give you 50.65 megahertz that is it. If you simply if you see here it is almost uh, 5 times is there. So, you should be able to do that one magnetic field strength this one and this one is there this is 5 times that we know by simple calculation. So, 5 times for this one you should multiply and you get the answer. So, this is the answer and then in NMR spectrometer commonly used in medicine the resonance frequency for the protons in water is 60 megahertz. If such an instrument was to be used to observe 31 p what frequency of radio frequency radiation would be required this one. So, 31 frequency we should know from gyromagnetic ratio frequency equals 1 h frequency into 0.405. So, that means if it is 60 megahertz we are using 60 into 0 0.405 would give you approximately 24.3 megahertz for 31 p. So, this is how you can write. So, now I have given one NMR I have given the molecule you have to interpret 195 NMR is shown in the figure 1 this is the figure 1 for the platinum complex assign the coupling constant. Now, what you can see is the structure is given and also this is a 15 n and of course, it is not labeled means it is understood is 14. Now, we have to see why we got 2 triplets and each triplet has intensity of 1 is to 1 is to 1 and usually a triplet with 1 is to 1 is to 1 has to do something with i value of 1 not half. 15 n means it has i equals half i equals half that means it, it has a 1, one j there should be 1 j p t ok. So, that means basically it first splits and this is due to 1 j p t 15 n. So, this coupling let us not worry about that one there is a coupling and now this will be split by 14 n 14 y n. So, n equals 1. So, if you write 2 n i plus 1. So, 2 into 1 is there nucleus and into spleen 1 plus 1 it will be 3. So, that means 3 of equal intensity why 3 equal intensity i equals 1. So, 1 will be like this, 1 will be like this, 1 will be like this. So, now intensity will be equal and so now we will see like this. 
So, intensity 1 is to 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1 is to 1, this is what we see here, yes we can interpret. So, it has coupling of both 14n, there is a 2j coupling, ok this value is 2j pt 14n. So, that is it. So, this is how you can interpret the spectrum, very easy, you have to think little bit, you have to give some time, try to understand how the splitting looks like, what is the intensity, you should be able to do it. One more question I have given here, so I have given 4 spectra here, write the appropriate structures and match the corresponding 31p NMR spectrum for the following inorganic cages and x plane. So, this is basically in the spectrum was given, observed for a mixture of samples when white phosphorus was reflected with certain quantity of sulfur. Sulfur what happens is very similar to white phosphorus reacting with oxygen to form phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus trioxide P2O3 or P2O5, here also we can get different compounds. And now based on what kind of compounds we get, by just looking to the spectrum we should be able to identify. So, if you see here and of course here chemical shifts I have not given, if you are familiar with chemical shift range then you should be able to tell. In the absence of this one, still one should be able to speculate that there are two samples having one type of phosphorus atoms. Assume in white phosphorus all the four phosphorus atoms are intact, so PP bonds are not broken, it is not fragmented, maybe insertion may be there of sulphur. In that case uh, two cases where we have four equivalent phosphorus atoms. In this one what happens? We have out of four, two of one side, two of one side because they split each other into triplets and here what we have is P and 3P, so something like this we have. So that means one uh, equivalent are 3P and one is P, so this one will split this into doublet and this will split into, now we have to write the structures. So probably by the, the just by looking into the 31p spectrum of pure white phosphorus and comparing, yes, maybe a small quantity of white phosphorus is left unreacted. Okay, you can see here, yes, this is there, this can be one of them. And now if you just look into this one, this is another product. In this one, all phosphorus are equivalent and very similar to this one. So this also shows a single signal. So this is for this one, let us assume, and this is for this one. And now here, these are of one type and this is one type. So this will show a quadrate and this will show a doublet. So that means basically, so this one is for this one. And now the other one is left, if you see here, two, this is of one type and this is of one type. These two will split into triplet and these two will split this into triplet and this is for this one. So this is how you can very nicely interpret and it is very, very interesting. Uh, when you make a molecule or when you get a mixture of compounds and when you get a good NMR spectrum, uh, you can really enjoy interpreting the data. It is wonderful. So, if you want to label them, this AX3 spin system, it is A to X2 spin system. Of course, what is why X, why not A, B or something that probably you should learn from uh, uh, fully dedicated NMR courses. As I mentioned here, it is only for interpreting. The sake of making you how to interpret without learning much basics, I am giving you only brief introduction to NMR spectroscopy. And of course, if you are more, you can also look into that one, what would happen to the chemical shift difference, what happened to the chemical constant, uh, coupling constant differences and all those things. And here I have listed, uh, you know, several uh, compounds containing uh, about 17 compounds containing phosphorus and also I have given the chemical shifts for each one and also the splitting pattern I have mentioned, day set. For example, here day set means 10 lines, 10 lines are there if you see here, it is trimethyl phosphorus. It is a trimethyl phosphate, 9 protons are splitting phosphorus into 10 deset line and pH coupling is 9.5, 2J pH coupling. If you interpret and write the structure in each case, I am sure uh, I can conclude that you know little more than 50 percent of 31 PNMR spectroscopy, you should be able to interpret any spectra that comes onto you with respect to 31 PNMR nucleus. Just try all those things. I am sure you should be able to get the correct structure in each case. So let me stop here and few more examples I would continue in my next lecture before I move on to interpretative IR spectroscopy to understand spectral IR spectra of coordination compounds with more emphasis for carbonyl groups. Until then have a great time and thank you for your kind attention.